Hi everyone, this is Professor Collins, and uh, we're going to go over um, calculating a 90% confidence interval. So remember confidence intervals are used to calculate a window um, within a given level of confidence um, based on a uh, sample statistic. So you're, you're calculating the, um, the mean of a population parameter um, based on a sample piece of data, right? Sample statistics and, and the window within there. Um, so I'm going to run through calculating a 90% confidence interval. And so this is equivalent to an alpha of um, 0 0.10. 0 0.10. Um, so we'll, we're going to be using the alpha level of 0 0.10 today. And so I've got this little uh, thing here to um, show our confidence interval calculation. And so the Z right here is equivalent to our alpha, alpha level of 0.01, also um, the same thing as our 90% confidence interval. So we're going to need several things for this, as you can see from this calculation. We're going to need a sample mean. So we'll calculate the sample mean. We're going to need the standard deviation and because we don't have the population standard deviation it shows in this formula here we're gonna calculate the sample standard deviation and then we're gonna calculate what um, uh, we'll also calculate the um, sample uh, mean or excuse me not the sample mean but the the sample um, uh, sample size So we'll call this sample size, also known as n. And then we're going to calculate a new, we're going to use a different formula here today that I'll show you guys, the confidence in our formula. And we'll call this, I'm just going to call this window of the confidence interval. All right. And the window of the confidence interval, so we have our mean here, right, which is equivalent to this piece of the equation, the x bar. Um, the window of the confidence interval is calculating this piece right here of the entire equation, right? So it's calculating that piece. So I, I'm going to actually, I'm going to cut if I can. That's not going to let me. Um, so, so we're basically cal calculating from where the z starts. We're calculating, the, calculating this part of the equation using the new formula. And then using that, we'll, we'll calculate the upper limit and lower lima, limit, all right? Um, so let's get started on this. I'm going to bold these um, so we can sort of identify what we're doing. So sample mean, right? We're going to use our average formula. And we'll grab our average from our data here, OK? So we've got our average of 26, roughly 26,000, almost 27,000. We're going to use our standard deviation of the sample, calculate the same using the same formulas, um, or not the same form, formula, excuse me, but the same um, array or same data set. Um, and actually what I'm going to do here, I'm going to cheat a little bit and just grab this. Then for our sample size, we're going to use our count function. So we have a sample size of 30. And now we want to um, add in our window here. And so for this, we're going to use the confidence interval formula, and we're going to use confidence norm. And so our alpha here is equivalent to this. So 0.1 is going to be our alpha. Our standard deviation is our sample standard deviation. And our size is our sample size. And that calculates the right side of the um, equation here, of our confidence interval equation. So we have a window of roughly four, $4,500. Now let's calculate our upper limit. So as you know, the confidence interval is the mean plus or minus um, the rest of the equation there, um, the standard error of the mean. And so we'll calculate the upper limit um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our sample mean, we're going to plus our window, and that's our upper limit, 
And then we're going to do the same thing for our lower limit. We're going to take our mean, and then this time we're going to minus our window. And that is going to be our confidence interval. So, so from this, we can interpret that if our student debt, if our sample, if our sample of students or a sample of households is anywhere representative of our larger population, we can make the interpretation that the, the population, the average, we'll call this the, the average student debt The for, so the average student debt for the population um, between 22,243.79 dollars and 31,227.47 dollars. So what this is telling us is that the average student debt for the population, assuming that our sample is anywhere representative of our population, whatever those two things may, may be for you, um, that our, our student debt for the population is somewhere between $22,243.79 to $31,227.47. Um, now, just a quick note, this does not mean that every person in the population's debt is at this level. What this means is that if we aggregate every person in the population, if we could collect that data, we would have an average across all of them of somewhere between this window. And we could be 90% confident that that's the case, right? Um, and we can shrink this confidence interval to, um, to a 95% confidence interval, right? So you can manipulate it in whatever way you'd like. Um, and so that is a quick intro to confidence intervals. Thanks for watching.